Hey Hickok 45, we're going to do a little more testing with the chronograph and barrel length, okay? We decided it might be interesting, interesting to me, and hopefully interesting to you all, uh, how much difference there is in velocity you know, between short barreled revolvers and then even on out to 20 inch barrels, okay? So we're going we're gonna to compare some hand loads and some factory loads. Not going to get too complicated with 49 different loads or anything. Just uh, a moderate magnum hand load up that I load, and then some Blazer factory ammo that we have. Okay, we're going to shoot some in the 3 inch 44, 629. We're going to shoot some in the 8 and 3 8 inch barrel 29, my classic. And then we're going to shoot the same rounds in the 20 inch barrel Marlin Cowboy version, okay? So, let's go ahead and load up some rounds here and run them through the chronograph. Now these are my hand loads and uh, 240 grain jacketed hollow point. Ooh. Oh, by the way, these are some bullets that were uh, sent to me, by the way, <laughs> by uh, Rocky Mountain Reloading. It's an outfit. They sent these about a year ago and I told them I would, I think I've got their card in here so I wouldn't forget. Uh, he said he'd be willing to send some. I said, well, I'll go ahead and send them. I'll eventually uh, load some up and try them out. <laughs> Well, eventually came about a year later, I guess. Uh, they're pulled bullets. You know, they're pulled uh, from cases for whatever reason. And, uh, and uh, you know, he wanted to see what I thought about their accuracy and everything. And they seem fine. I've shot a few of them. And I finally got some of them loaded up. You know, I, always, I eventually get, the, get around to everything. Uh, well, usually I do. All right. So we got to... No, wait a minute. I loaded six, didn't I? Well, we're really going to do three-shot uh, strings here. Let me... You know what? Let's just shoot some stuff we've got set out here. Uh, put three of these to better use. How's that? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, it needs three on the chronograph. Oh, that sweet sound. Let's put one on the tree. Whoa. <laughs> that knocks it around, doesn't it? Okay, we have three left. So we'll turn on my antique chronograph and uh, take three shots. I'll try to avoid shooting the chronograph or any steel for that matter. 93, 76, 65. For an average of 844. Okay, 844 out of the three inch. These are the hand loads. All right. So, let's use the same ammo in the 8 inch barrel. It's actually 8 and 3 eighths. Let's, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's load 6 each time just for kicks. Uh, and take a couple on the range. That's one reason I don't do this kind of thing very often. Let me turn it off. This is weird. I reset it by turning it off and on. Because uh, I'd rather just shoot targets, as you know. Okay, we have three left. All right, let's turn him back on. Get this long barrel back here. See if there's any difference. All right. Let's see what we got. 870. Okay. 870 feet per second average out of three rounds. All right, well, not all that much difference, is it? It's interesting. Now, let's try this baby. 20 inch, we're moving on up to 20, more than double. Pretty good math, huh? What a genius I am. We'll go, let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll put six in. When you're uh, feeble-minded, you have to be consistent with things. Helps you keep track of stuff. <laughs> One, two, three. All right, that means I have three left, I'll bet. Okay. All right, got him reset. See if I can keep from shooting the chronograph. All right. 
we have 1215 whoa considerable difference there huh so we go from 844 3 inch 870 8 inch and then 1215 feet per second with a 20 inch barrel okay well that's interesting you know, and, and, and by the way, those rounds seem uh, plenty accurate, even though they're pulled bullets. I really couldn't see any uh, you know, markings on them that would affect accuracy at all. Okay, uh, I'll put the information on that. I don't even know what the pricing is, to tell you the truth, but it might be something you want to check out. I'm assuming there was a discount you know, versus new bullets, so I'll put that in the description so you can uh, at least check it out if you want to. All right, sorry uh, taking so long to get to those because you sent me several thousand of those things. And I just never did get to it. All right, let's get back to the three inch barrel. And let's do uh, the same thing here. Let's put six in. Y'all won't begrudge me a little shooting here off the chronograph, will you? Here's your blazer, 240 grain. Kind of the same bullet, looks like, right? Ah, uh, what do we have to shoot here? Mr. Cowboy. Got three left. Those are a little bit stouter than my hand loads. My hand loads are just moderate magnums. Okay, comfortable to shoot, fun to shoot. All right, here we go. A thousand, wow. 985. 66. 984. Okay, 984. Now let's try the big boy. My favorite revolver. Most of you know I bought this in 1974. Still going strong. We got three left. All right. Blazer, 240 grain. Ten twenty-four. Okay, there's the difference. Nine eighty-four versus ten twenty-four. Okay. I'll let you all do the math. I didn't bring a calculator other than my brain. All right, let's put some in the rifle. All I've had some, I've noticed people online have mentioned how they reload uh, aluminum brass. I don't know how you do that. I think this stuff is all bird end primed. Looks to me like this doesn't use a standard primer uh, function. I don't know. Five, six, but you generally don't reload aluminum brass. All right, Let's pick a little piggy off, maybe. What I'm hitting, I don't know where I'm going. All right, bet I can hit the chronograph though, because it's a lot closer. All right. Thirteen forty-four. That was a good year. All right. So there's your difference on that one. So that shows you the difference between barrel lengths. Okay. Uh, now uh, I've done the math, but you know you might notice a bigger difference. When you, as you move from barrel to barrel length, barrel length to barrel length, uh, with one bullet more so than another, another cartridge. Okay, now I'm not a scientist and all this, but it depends on the powder being used. This is kind of a slow, I use 2400 in this most of the time now. Uh, it's kind of a slower burning powder. Uh, they probably use a little faster burning powder in the, in the most factory loads, don't know for sure. Less bulky, cheaper to load. 2400 is a kind of a 
bulk powder and it takes a lot of it so it's more expensive to use in a lot of ways but anyway the the powder that's being used uh, makes a difference in all this just just be aware of that we could test we could take like 10 of you who load 44 magnum with different loads and things different types of powder and we can do the same test and we would get a different number uh, a, a different uh, uh, incremental number you know your load might uh, increase more with the eight inch barrel or it might increase less you know versus a three inch uh, so, so just be aware of all that you know we're not really testing powders and reaching any detailed scientific conclusions with this just generally more of a basics here to uh, remind people and to inform some people that barrel length does increase velocity now why I have no idea I just discovered a long time ago and I have no idea now I actually have a little idea it uh, it does have to do with the type of powder it's a, as the powder is burning in the barrel because it doesn't explode you know a lot of people think a bullet explodes you know like a hand grenade or something it just burns and sends the bullet out all right so that powder is burning as it's you know behind the the bullet yeah, as it's uh, cruising through the, the barrel and the rifling, if you have rifling. Uh, and so some powder, uh, well, the, the powder doesn't all burn, put it, put it mildly. For example, 2400, uh, I'm sure uh, this is not the most efficient barrel length for 2400, you know, because it is a bulky powder. And so it's, it's not all burning up by the time the bullet exits, okay? So you're not taking full advantage of the powder. So as you get an increased barrel length there, then, for example, out here at this point in the barrel, let's say the powder is still actually burning and accelerating. So there's no place for this to accelerate because you're out of barrel in three inches. So it's still accelerating. And as I pointed out in an earlier video uh, like this, there is a point of diminishing returns though. You know, if your barrel is 20, 40, 80 inches long or something, you know, you're going to be starting to slow down the bullet once that powder burns. You, know, you got your thrust, okay? The thrust is over with, all right, at some point. So that's kind of the reason in non-scientific terms. Uh, what else would you expect from me, right? And then to another uh, uh, aside on this is if your barrel is ported, that can affect uh, the velocity. Of, say we had ports in the barrel, holes, that's holes in the barrel. Maybe right in here like I have on my guide gun, 4570. That can, if your powder has not reached its full uh, maximum potential, when it gets to the to the ports, then all of a sudden it's you know it's spraying out. So that can reduce velocity a little bit. If we had ports in this barrel, for example, say right here, three or four, five, six port holes, and then another gun just like it without the ports would probably get a little more velocity, you know, in the non-ported barrel. Just a little extra piece of information there. I won't charge you for it. So that's kind of what that's all about. So. I don't know if that was interesting to you or not. It's kind of interesting to me that the, uh, the, the, the rifle, the 20 inch barrel, made uh, you know, such a difference. Now, I've got a question for you. The barrel is longer, but there's another reason that you would get more velocity out of this uh, firearm. If we cut this barrel down to eight and three eighths inches, same length as this barrel, uh, before we were sent to federal prison for doing it, uh, <laughs> Uh, we would get more velocity from this barrel, I think. Why is that, boys and girls? The reason you got it, you guessed it. Even some of you new people guessed it. You don't have the uh, the cylinder gap between forcing cone the barrel and the end of the cylinder there, do you? See, so you do lose some pressure right there with the revolver. That's not dramatic. You don't lose 800 feet per second or something, but you do lose a little bit of pressure right there. Whereas you have a closed system here, you put that bullet in, it locks it into the chamber. And so you make sense. So you would, I, I mean, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that would be the, the case if we cut it down to the same length. So. Uh, just another little piece of information there I won't charge you for. Uh, so anyway, just a little, a little uh, quickie about bullet velocity and barrel length. And we could have brought out some different 44s. I don't have a six inch. You can kind of extrapolate and kind of figure about where if we had a, a six inch barrel, probably where it would fall. You know, you got the three, you got the eight, and then we've got the 20 on that. And if maybe if you had a longer rifle barrel, maybe it'd make a difference too, depending how efficient the powder is. But again, it depends on the powder you're using. That, that's a big factor. And even the weight of the bullet. 
you know, that, that can make a difference in terms of how efficient the powder is and when all the powder is burned and how soon it burns, how long a barrel uh, you need to, to shoot that bullet the most efficiently and all this. So it, it can get pretty complex, more complex and complicated than most of you want to get or even hear about. And then I could even explain myself. So uh, anyway, I won't get into that. So hope you enjoyed that. Life is good.